Hello, I am Bernard Rieke and I'd like to talk a bit about how to give effective scientific presentations or really any kind of presentations. But first of all, I really don't give this presentation because I think I'm a great speaker myself. Rather, I think I know a lot of the different problems. I've experienced many of them myself and so I would want to just share some of these insights. Hopefully they can be useful. And of course, I might not be able to follow all the advice that I give here uh, to you guys. One of the most important pieces of advice I can probably give is really try to observe and really critically analyze different talks you hear. So really learn from good and bad speakers. So one thing that could be really useful is to think some of about some of the best presentations you ever saw or heard, what really made them stick out. What could you learn from that? So really be critical uh, about this and try to understand what made it work. But then, of course, also keep in mind that your presentation style might be quite different. So just because there's a certain person who has an amazing way of talking and presenting, that doesn't mean this would work for you. The other part is, of course, to look for a presentation that you didn't like so much. And there's a great activity to do at conferences um, when you're sitting there and you feel like you cannot really escape. There's often something you can still learn. But first of all, well, why would we even bother about giving good talks? I mean, in a way, just about any topic, but especially sciences, is really about communication. And especially in STEM, uh, there is such a criticism of us not being able to communicate this well. So I think it is really crucial to come up with an easy and clear way to do justice to your topic, but also to not bore the uh, audience or yourself and really being mindful of the limited time that everybody has. Another reason is that scientific publications can really take a lot of time, often many years until they come to fruition and you see a paper. Talks can be a much more immediate way to present your work and hopefully in a more direct and visual manner. It can also be a really good chance to explain the work to others, discuss it, get feedback, especially at presentations, at conferences, at workshops, these kind of things. Obviously, it can also help to get recognition, get appraisal if it's part of a school or university, it can help with a grade or even job promotion. Whereas if you have a more poorly presented talk, really it can waste a lot of the time of the audience and the speaker and it just really frustrating for the audience. It might also give the impression that the speaker actually doesn't care about the audience, which might be even worse than just giving a bad presentation. So really, it's about the audience and it's about the topic and it's about caring for the audience. And if you really care about the audience, then you almost automatically will try to make the topic understandable and a matter for them. So I'd like to go over a few misconceptions about talks. Most importantly, the purpose of the talk is not really to impress, show your ego, your power, your whatever you want to show off. This is not really the purpose. The goal is really to serve the audience, to care about the audience and give a presentation that shows that you care by allowing them to understand, get something, take something away from it that they might not even have expected. So it's really, you're the servant of the audience, not the other way around. And talks really shouldn't be read aloud papers. Typically, most people will actually prefer to read a paper at their own pace and they can skim things and underline and so on. So if you're really just reading a lot of paper, you're kind of wasting a lot of these examples. And this one example where I'm actually violating some rules here because I have a lot of text on the slides in part to hopefully help the audience uh, capture the key points, but you should really never just read out the full paper because often when you write a text, it'll be a lot more complex and complicated. So if anything, I really suggest just having a few keywords or triggers and then improvise around those because then it'll be at the pace and the phrasing and complexity that you can handle as a speaker, which makes it much more likely that the audience can also handle it when they are listening to it. 
and there's a lot of high tech and fanciness, especially PowerPoint and related products that you could be using, but really I suggest to only do this if it really has a specific value. So really do this only if they improve your message. Another misconception is that standard outlines can really help. So just about any scientific paper will probably have an introduction, maybe a problem statement, methods, results, discussion, conclusions, but this is all redundant because just about any paper has that. So talking about you talk, talking about this in the future will likely bore people right at the beginning. So especially the beginning is really the part where you want to capture people's attention right from the get go somehow present something that makes them actually care about it and not talk about things that are obvious or redundant or really not of interest. So basically you have the first maybe 10, 20, if you're lucky, 30 seconds to capture people's audience. And if you don't do this, then they might just click somewhere else, go somewhere else, uh, tune off or yeah, basically not think that highly of you because you didn't care enough about them to give them a motivation to really listen to you. Another misconception is that talk take a little time to prepare. Well, it depends on how important a talk is. I mean, one of the extreme examples is probably TED Talks, where literally people practice for 100 hours, or sometimes 200 or even more, just to give these maximum of 18 minutes presentations. And of course, not every talk needs to be that perfectly rehearsed because it's probably also not uh, being listed on the TED website, but still taking the time to prepare it well, especially if it's a talk that matters, is really important. So the key things for talks is really focus on the big picture. So first things first. So one typical structure could be re really be to start with the why, the aim of the presentation, what you really want to get across and why should the audience listen. Because if you don't do this at the beginning, then people are not already interested in your presentation or are still debating whether you're interested, they're interested or not. They might just leave or you might lose them. Another aspect that's really important, of course, is the content, so the what, but really only after you explained why it matters. Thinking about the audience is obviously really important. So the more you know about the audience and how to capture the interest can be really useful. If it's a small setting, you might even uh, be able to ask or mingle or meet with them before. And if it's a larger one, make sure to have at least an idea of who's in the audience. And if in doubt, make sure it's always accessible for more lay people, people not already excited about it. Another aspect is really how you present it. And so there you can think about uh, different teaching, learning methods and so on. What would be a best way to really present your data? And of course, the setting, the environment where you're presenting things can really have a huge employ uh, impact. And finally, maybe the biggest part that's really great to the initial why is really the so what, the motivation. So what you really want to present, why does it really matter, what's your motivation, what would be somebody else's motivation to listen to this, what's the motivation of the research, of the findings, of uh, the content you present. So one way to look at the structure or content of a talk is really these kind of double hourglass idea where you start broadly at the top and kind of try to narrow in try to get people excited about your topic, which is typically fairly narrow, it's kind of the middle of the hourglass. And you really try to get them to understand why this might be relevant for them, why they might want to listen, what's the audience benefits. So in a way that's kind of bridge between you and the audience, having some kind of hook, something that's almost like Velcro that sticks, if you can relate it to their experience, then can be really useful. Now the what part could be the introduction problem statement. So what is it really about? What aspects of the problem are you trying to solve? Where you do address a gap in the literature? Why are you even doing this? So coming back to the motivation can often help. What's your overarching goal? And 
always consider what's really the background for people to understand your talk. Another part you cover at some point, of course, is the actual how. How did you do your research? What approach did you use? How did you go about solving and making problem, uh, progress on the problem? And what are caveats maybe of this one? And what did you control, not control? What kind of experimental design? All these kind of things, really. These are the details. But keep in mind, if you don't open it up, that's the funnel, at the beginning to get people excited, you, that's where you would lose them. And typically, honestly, most people aren't as interested in the specific methods, especially if there's a paper with this. So really, if you have to shorten any part, it's typically the details, the methods, the specifics about the approach. It's so often enough that people really get the main idea. And the other part that really cares, okay, what are actually the results? What did you find and how does it matter? Again, make sure to not get lost in the details, but really provide a clear summary of why people should actually care about this. So what is the uh, answer? What did you really find out and what does it really mean? So really discussing it, and I mean seriously discussing what are really the implications and as usual distinguish between the actual results and what it means from your perspective. So really make sure to distinguish that. So people might disagree with your interpretation and your discussion, but they should not disagree with the actual results. So does it contribute to theory? Does it contribute to our understanding? Does it advance the field forward? What gaps? in the literature does it actually address? Will it improve existing knowledge? And really, what is your main message? So just really be clear. Another way to look at this is really that the introduction and conclusion should be understandable for the general audience, uh, the entire audience. And the more you go into the details, into the deep weeds of the methods and some of the statistical details and so on, the more you might lose the general audience and the more it might be interesting for some of the specialists. But keep in mind, unless you're talking to an audience of only specialists, you might want to make sure you don't really lose everybody else. Another part that can be really useful is understanding your audience. So what do they really care about? What is their background, their overall level, their pre-knowledge? If they come from a sort of theoretical viewpoint, you might want to know, do they have a strong beliefs, attitude, maybe even prejudices? This can really be super useful. Also, what's their interested, interest in looking at your presentation, watching it, clicking on it, going to a talk, wherever it is? So why did they actually come? What do they want from you? How can you help them? How could you serve them? Also, especially in, in research, uh, English is the standard language, but most people actually don't have uh, English as their original uh, language they grew up with and are super comfortable with. So keep that in mind. And also just be humble and be understanding if people don't have English as their native tongue, just like myself, uh, people might make a lot of mistakes. And even if people have it as a native language, they might have some dialects and so on. So just be aware of what the audience is, what kind of complexity and speed and so on of language they might actually understand. Then also, what's the actual purpose or occasion of your talk, of your presentation? So one thing you can do is once you understand where they come from and so on, you could try and use this as a hook. So for example, if there are, uh, if, there, if you present a specific location, if you've been invited and so on, maybe there's a local reference point or if people that you present to have worked on this field and really make sure to cite and refer to them. Um, I and many others made the mistake of not doing that, which is not a good idea. So you really want to make sure if there's important people in your audience that you're kind of aware of what they did. And uh, yeah, mention their work really. And also consider the time location. If it's in person, then uh, this might be after dinner, after a party, or in the morning after the party, whatever. If it's online, people might be coming in from different time zones. So really deal with that. It uh, might 
be too hard for them if you start really complex in the early morning. So just be easy on your audience and make it easy for them. But really, no matter how experienced you are, nothing will really help you more than practicing your talk. So especially compared to fiddling work with PowerPoint animations and details and all kinds of funky things and fancy things you can do. It definitely helps you feel more comfortable with the topic. It's also really useful for you to know the roadmap of what's coming up next. So for you to feel comfortable, that's also where the preview slides, the instructors or the presenters, you can be quite useful. And especially if you're a non-native speaker, really rehearse with native speakers as much as possible, but really don't worry much about your accent or pronunciation. Uh, you won't be able to change that easily. It just takes years and years of practice. Just smiling about it. The most important thing is really that people can understand you. So for example, if you tend to talk way too fast or mumble too much, you might want to really try hard to enunciate better. Um, a problem that I have myself, definitely. Um, and sometimes, if you're not certain, take it easy, smile, it's okay, people are happy if they understand you and if they can get something out of this talk, even if it's not the most perfect English. So really, if you have half an hour, practice. Give it a try, especially the beginning and end, and, and don't really fiddle with the software. As much as you can, try to get some feedback from people, ideally from different backgrounds. Another thing that people can sometimes do is really over-memorize, over-rehearse, write down the whole thing, and then what happens is they're kind of stuck. They might realize while giving the presentation that their script is too complex, people don't really understand, they want, might want to give de uh, get deeper, or oh, there's a really interesting example that came up that you want to integrate, but if you have your talk written out, you're kind of tied to that, and it's much harder to get back into it compared to when you have just a rough outline. Really consider timing. If you have a time limit, really be mindful of the audience and other people's time. So sometimes really having a reverse timer can be super useful. So Ted is well known to have this massive red clock that takes backwards from 18 minutes or whatever time you have. And just having this reverse timer can be super useful. Now, the really important aspect is really how you build up your arguments, how you design for the flow. So ideally, you want people to, to want to listen to the next part because they realize like, oh, that would be interesting. How, so how can you really work on the transitions, and the smoothness? And of course, everybody has their own quirks and R's and M's and so on. Um, try to well, stay calm. It's easier said than done, of course. But one important thing is really, especially between slides, between topics, chapters, whatever it is you're presenting, really designing the transitions for them will help you as a speaker, but also will help the audience. So let's talk a bit more uh, about this, the flow and smoothness, and especially the transitions. So one of the things you can do is really make sure that people realize, oh, well, this is actually something important. So just pausing and really daring to hold a pause for a second or two before moving on, that really emphasizes things. If you care about this material enough to spend a, a second or two pausing, that gives the audience a clear indication that this actually matters. Now, facing the audience, summarizing, reinforcing essential points of the previous sections, in your own words can really be super useful and can help to capture the essence. You might want to maybe put even the keywords or half sense or whatever uh, things or visuals on the screen before you move on. But really keys to keep the big picture in mind. So the context, the motivation for the next uh, section. So it's almost like you want to prime the audience to expect or to want to listen for the next part. So some of this can help back to, especially if you're deep in the details, it can help to get back to the overall goal, the contributions. 
so they really understand where you're going with that. If you really want questions, you need to basically be able to dare silence because it's only really when there's silence that people might realize, oh, they actually want my feedback. So the speaker really cares about me and is actually listening. And yeah, then move to the next session. But really make sure that all the pieces really needed for the final conclusion are understood and maybe reiterate it, or you can reiterate them on your conclusions slide. So focusing on the essentials can really help to maintain the focus. Uh, and sometimes summarizing the key parts can really help people and give them a chance to catch up. Now, another key challenge is really how to keep the audience interested. And one aspect is really relating to the audience. So not just to your computer, your blackboard, your screen, but really actually looking at them, listening to them, not like staring them down or staring at the session chair or the screen, but really having an open view, especially if you're nervous, it can help to pick out a few people, friendly faces in the audience, maybe people you know, um, but make sure they're kind of distributed across the audience. And of course, this is all for in-person presentations, for online presentations, for video presentations. In a way, it's a lot harder because typically your slides will not be directly next to the camera. So you ideally would want to talk at the camera if your face is recorded. And if your face is not recorded, like in this video, then obviously it makes it a lot harder because people don't really know you. They might not even see you. But it really helps to look at the person, if they can see you, uh, like in a real presentation or if your image is being recorded. So always look at some person and make an important point or conclusion and so they know you actually addressing them. And also lack of eye contact uh, might sometimes suggest evasiveness or maybe even lying in the virtuous place, but you definitely don't want to look down at your own shoes when you try to make a really important point. And of course, interacting with the audience can really be useful uh, as a way to engage, but really only do this if you actually have time for this. So if you have only five or 10 or whatever minutes to present and you have a lot to go through, then make this decision upfront. How much time do you actually have for uh, questions and for interruptions? And are you ready to, to handle them on stage? But if you do, that's great, but invite them to ask questions. But be, you might want to be more specific, not just like, oh, any questions, and then move on. But really care about them. Relating to the audience is also really useful. And that really depends a lot on what your individual style is, speaking style, presentation style. Uh, some people are really good at cracking jokes. Um, typically not. Some people are really good storytellers. See whether that's you or not. Some people are amazing, have these almost secret superpowers once they allow themselves to do this. Um, but at the least, try to make it relevant to the audience. And if you want to be funny, really make sure it works for you. And if that's not you, then it might be better to not try. And just basically be yourself, whatever you are. Typically, once you come uh, across as authentic, as humble, as caring about the audience, that is already a lot. Uh, because if people realize that you actually care about them, this helps a lot. And keep in mind, if you are bored, so will the audience. So at least for the time you're presenting, really make sure you actually are excited about it. Um, and if you have a really hard time being excited, then change your talk, change your topic, find something in it that you really care about. Um, and I mean, don't pretend to be, don't be, pretend to whatever be a show master or car seller or something like that, but really have an authentic interest in your topic because that will carry. And also don't use a suspense principle for presentations that the resolution is only at the very end. You, maybe some people can do this, but typically people might just be lost, you might lose your audience just before even reaching to the end point. 
And you might be a few points that might be obvious, but I still want to quickly go over them. So simplicity and clarity are really key aspects. So really make sure whatever you do, it's you don't make it any more complicated than necessary. There's nothing positive about providing, giving a complex talk that nobody can understand. If your topic is already complex, then if it's even more important to simplify. But even if your to topic is simple, then that's okay, that's good. The audience will really appreciate it. So make sure to prepare carefully, logically, have a story. Telling stories can help so much in terms of providing context, getting people excited, making it more memorable. And yes, especially for shy or introverted people like myself, it can be really hard to speak clearly, loudly, and at moderate speed. One advantage of uploading it to YouTube, Vimeo, and so on is actually that people can speed up and slow it down. So uh, maybe it's not quite as critical anymore if you talk too fast or too slow because people might uh, change the playback speed anyways. But for real presentation, live presentation, just make sure that everybody can follow and you also don't bore them. As much as possible, try to avoid jargons, abbreviations, acronyms, anything that's unnecessarily complicated, unless it's absolutely, absolutely needed, and be critical about this. Instead, as much as possible, use illustrations, analogies, metaphors work really well, mnemonics, visual aids, anything that kind of sticks to their mind and that they can help them remember and care about it. And of course, the obvious part, really check for typos, for errors. Um, it can actually help to number your slides so people can refer back to them at the end, like, oh, could you go back to slide 18? So some people literally remember those or write things down. Avoid excessive details. So really try to concentrate on the main topics. Um, think of at least needing typically one to two minutes per slide, depending on how dense they are. And always keep in mind, do you really want your audience to remember the big picture, the take home message or little details? So make sure to take your time to, uh, and plan things accordingly. And especially if it's a complex topic, really concentrate on just a few key things. I mean, for TED Talks, the main goal is really, okay, you have one core idea and everything else should be surrounded uh, surround that core idea and help convey that one. For scholarly presentation, scientific presentation, there might be a bit more, but really keep it clear. Also keep in mind, I mean, how many conclusions can you really remember? So sometimes using carefully chosen repetitions and summary slides or going back to it and maybe reframing it uh, using a different metaphor can really be quite useful. Another part is, I mean, really avoid difficult to parse materials and especially equations, code, fancy color things and on. Really use this only if you, good, if you have a good reason. Um, and if you feel like you need to have the equation there and so on, then tell people what it means or that they really don't care, have to care. But then the question is really, why do you put it there? So ideally try to give people some guidance, some idea on what to do with all the text. And here's another part that's hard that I also te uh, tend to violate quite too often. Ideally, the text on the slides should be mainly for the audience, not for yourself. You can use speaker notes unless you're a TED, then you're not allowed to have them. But typically, you're allowed to have speaker notes and slide notes. You often will have a presenter's view. You could uh, use little cards or whatever you hold on your hand. And especially avoid a lot of text, especially if it comes up at once. Why? I mean, people really cannot read and listen to you simultaneously. Once you put text up, it's very likely that somebody will start reading the text. And if what you say doesn't match the text, then you're typically lost. So really don't talk while showing lots of new text. Or if you want to show a new text, maybe go through that actual text of your quote, maybe actually read it. So the slides should really support and guide your talk. So really try to cooperate with your slides. 
And another part is really, I mean, care about the audience. Just because you took forever to do the science, to do all the drudge work, doesn't mean that they need to listen to it. So basically, even though it might have taken you years to come up with this, this doesn't mean that you need to talk about all the details. The core aspect is really, okay, why should people care about it? And finally, of course, take advantage of all kinds of visualizations, oralizations. People remember a lot better anything they hear and see, especially if it's animated or dynamic or if they can even interact than just a boring visualization. So here's some particularly bad example uh, where there's just lots of tiny numbers and you cannot read the text. It's uh, nothing pops out really. There's a slightly better version of that, but again, it's just too much text. It's hard to pick out the key aspect. Uh, one thing that is uh, useful is always to have some kind of summary sentence on slides, but that's a completely different presentation. That's another talk, so I won't talk too much about visualizations here. So I'm just going to briefly go over the essence So really help your audience pick out what is important. You can use all kinds of highlighting colors and so on, but just be aware that a lot of people are red green deficient. And if you, if it's presented on a projection screen, then the contrast might be quite low. If you do have data plots, really keep it simple. Don't overload them. Make sure the key aspects really stick out. Be aware of the size of plot and lines and so on have meaningful captions that ideally are self uh, understood and check for overall readability and especially add error bars if you want to be taken seriously in research and quantitative research <coughs> and uh, avoid useless gimmicks uh, like 3d plots if nothing's really 3d that's not really helping anybody so i mean feel free to use fancy stuff but really only if it supports your message and overall readability and if you're not overusing it. And you, you can also think of uh, visual analytics and InfoViz and so on as fields that have actually a lot of experience on how to present things. So I'd just like to go over a few key things because they are sometimes overlooked. So the world actually looks different to different people. If some people have a red green deficiency or even a blue yellow deficiency, which is a lot more uh, uh, unfrequent, the world literally looks different to them. You can actually check how things look like. So for example, some colorful heads will look quite different for different people. Of course, we cannot know how it looks like to another person, but they can tell you that they might not be able to distinguish between the orange and the red and the green hat here. Obvious part is make sure it's readable. And especially if you have a really huge, beautiful, whatever 30 or more inch uh, 4K resolution screen, it'll really look nice there. But if people watch it on their small screen or uh, phone or tablet, then this might not work quite as well. Now, another key thing is really to spend enough time to plan and prepare your beginnings and the endings. So really having a strong beginning and end is really key. So it can actually help to write down the first few sentences to give you a good start so you're comfortable with it. So you can even memorize those, but I really would suggest to not write down anything more than the first few sentences because it'll limit you afterwards. Make sure you don't lose the audience on the first slide. You might even want to have some kind of visual hook, something interesting in there, maybe even a video or illustration if, if that's sensible or an audio clip or whatever that will bear, be there in the background. And if it's at a conference, keep in mind that often you might be introduced by the host, so you don't need to introduce yourself again with the same detail. Although it might be useful if uh, you tell them or you pronounce your name so they know how it's actually supposed to be pronounced. Um, Definitely use meaningful titles and headlines and so on. Make sure all the important part is really there. Often the first and the last slides will stay on for a bit longer. The other part is really having a clear and strong ending. This is where you get a chance for the message to really sink in. So writing it down can be good. Also make clear that people know. So make the audience know when the talk is actually over. A simple thank you can be a nice way of ending a talk. 
and um, sometimes you might want to actually keep the last slide up for a bit longer so what you definitely don't want is to uh, just say thank you on the last slide because that doesn't help them remember anything you said or even worse just okay click exit to exit the powerpoint presentation it's also not a very good last slide so really design for the last slide to maybe be the summary of your core aspect what people sh really should remember because very likely it'll stay up for at least a few more seconds and sometimes even for the whole discussion period don't forget to thank uh, people it can be done at the beginning it can be done at the end but again make sure it doesn't take too long because at the beginning you might lose your audience at the end uh, you might bore them so make it brief make it clear maybe show the pictures and all the names on a slide and finally really before you go to a presentation before you do your recording and so on make sure that everything really works if it's in a physical setting, make sure you know the room. Where Where is it? What are the facilities? Do you have a video projector? Do you have a, po a pointer or the uh, whatever adapter cables you might need? Uh, bring your own equipment if possible. If not, if you have to use somebody else's equipment, make sure you check and it works. And you can bring a backup. In the old days, we might have brought a CD or memory stick. Stick now, it might much more often be online. But keep in mind, Wi-Fi can't fail and it can actually be useful to even have a printout of this so just in the worst case that whatever technology fails internet shuts down projector dies uh, you have a blackout whatever if you have a physical printout then you could at least still continue or at least finish your talk uh, without having to rely on your devices also Make sure, especially if you're using animations, movies, and so on, make sure these actually work, are transmitted properly, and do prepare for technical failure. It can happen, it does happen quite often. If it happens, keep calm, people will understand it, uh, but you really have a good backup. And make sure to know how to operate the presentation medium. For example, in PowerPoint, there's lots of useful shortcuts to go back to switch the external speaker and so on so really make sure you familiarize your, yourself with them one of the things you definitely want to avoid is if especially if you give a live presentation that you plug in your computer and show something very embarrassing on your desktop or whatever or there's some pop-up there's some text mess messages that you really don't want people to see um, so really make sure that you switch all of this off either have a clean background or nothing at all and also make sure that your computer won't beep uh, or uh, notify you or anything like that. Similar to any device, any phone, whatever you have, make sure it's on silent because it is so distracting. I literally had this once that while a guy was giving a presentation, it was a big international conference, I'm not sure whether it was fake or not, uh, but literally his mother called and he made the mistake to take the call but it wasn't really that comedic, uh, so uh, just really make sure anything that could distract you specifically is switched off, especially your own ringtone will distract you like nothing else. If it's a physical setting, it really helps to, to have some kind of clock or something that indicates the time. This can just be on uh, your PowerPoint, but even if you're just giving a screen recording and so on, having an easily accessible clock or time indicator can be really useful especially if you talk for more than a few minutes but even for very short talks i think it really helps to have some glass of water or something that you can drink because you will likely dry out and really if it's a longer session make sure you feel comfortable so go for to the bathroom before you talk and a few more talk uh ideas and suggestions for people who get nervous easily which is a lot of us so there's hardly anybody out there that's not at least to some degree nervous or at least excited if you uh, see it in a positive lens before they go on stage so a couple of things that can really help is right on the beginning and closing senses you so you have an anchor you feel safe on that part take a deep breath remember actually the audience wants you to succeed Often they're not as critical as you might uh, see, even if you if it's your thesis defense or drop talk or first presentation at a conference. Really, people are interested in seeing the best of you and 
they really want you to succeed. Keep in mind your adrenaline level is typically high enough, so you normally don't need a lot of extra coffee beforehand. Another part is really to think about, okay, how do you actually start the talk? Like what is the first few sentences or words? And sometimes it's just a simple smile and something like, okay, thanks for inviting me, can just be a nice way to start. So to really think of, okay, what's the transition from before you talk to into your talk? As mentioned beforehand, finding a few friendly faces in the audience to look at uh, can really be useful, especially if there's some staring or sleepy per people in there. Try to avoid those. Try to avoid looking at people that might, might distract you. So if you can, take a close look at the audience beforehand and get an idea. And if you feel like anything would distract you, just kind of, it's almost like look through the audience um, or look at like the spot between their eyes and so on. If uh, looking at somebody's eyes is too distracting. So there's lots of talks and you can of course Google a bit more. Also, you don't need to be perfect. Everybody makes mistakes and stumbles and so on. And everybody really wants you to succeed. So don't be too harsh on yourself because it really uh, won't help anybody. Also, keep in mind, I mean, mistakes can be one of the most valuable experiences as long as you learn from them. So again, practice presentations as early as you can with some audience, the real audience, fake audience or remote audience, whatever, and really practice. So search for ways and occasions to practice public speaking. Now, a few things that might come up is questions. So ideally you want to anticipate what the kind of criticism that can come up. So you could basically do a devil's advocate session with uh, somebody beforehand so you get an idea of what might be the really hard ones and then really try to anticipate what could come up, especially challenging, embarrassing one, like the questions that you hope nobody will ask. Make sure you at least have an answer ready. So you could, especially if it's a really important part or you don't manage to go through all your materials or presentations and slides, really have some backup slides, prepare some answers in advance. So you could use this. Um, if you're not certain what it is, you can ask the questioner to actually uh, complete the question itself. So sometimes it's a more of a rhetorical question, so you might not even need to answer it. If it might sometimes just be only a statement. Um, but if it is a question that you're not sure you understand, then it might be better to just double check like, oh, is this what you mean? Is that your question? Just want to make sure you really understand or if it's really long. And if it's in, in an online setting, you might even ask them to also write it down in the chat or whatever way to communicate you have. So you can look back at it. Uh, you can also write it down yourself. Always listen attentively and try to figure out what's really behind it. Answer clearly, friendly. Even if the question might seem stupid, doesn't matter. Uh, you're in charge, you're the presenter. So just keep calm and explain it in a friendly way. You could also repeat or rephrase the question uh, that has the advantage of giving you a bit more extra time to think and but also make sure that the audience heard it if uh, it's in a physical settings and you have the microphone but nobody else does and yes really make sure you understand what the real question is you might want to double check even after you gave your answer if you have enough time to see like oh i hope this uh, answers your question if there's anything left open so really if there's more time smaller audience this can also turn into an actual conversation um, and sometimes you can do little tricks, like you can walk slowly across the stage uh, if you want to really get some time. Some people literally position their water bottle uh, at the wrong table, so they need to go over there and go back to just buy them a few minutes if you really uh, are uncertain. And also, I mean, if you don't know the answer, that's okay. The audience will respect this. Typically, they don't expect you to be omniscient to know everything. It actually might even be better if you come across or actually are humble and honest and authentic and maybe even vulnerable. Like, that's a really good question. I wish I would have talked about this beforehand. Um, so yeah, let me think a bit more about it or 
um, I'll get back to you tomorrow or hmm, interesting. That's a really good question. I'd love to discuss this with you afterwards. Um, so this can even be a, a way to kickstart interesting conversations. Or if there's somebody else in the audience that's part of your team or whatever, I mean, you might even be able to refer to them. But really make sure you don't judge or question the questionnaire or the questions. Um, so you, if you always say like, oh, that's a really good question, and you tell this 10 times, that's not the most convincing. Um, so at, at least vary that a little bit. If it is a really good question that you haven't thought about, then maybe state this. Um, but yeah, do, don't try not to judge the questionnaire or where they come from or their theoretical background or framing. But try to stay in control. So sometimes questions might ramble and so on. So, so make sure you stay in control. If it's really difficult questions, you might want to postpone them until the final discussion, especially if they interrupt you or until after the talk. And really try to get back on track, even if really bizarre questions come up. So, so really, if you're the presenter, then often uh, can be useful to really start, try and stay in control. And this includes remaining friendly. So really never ever getting defensive. But also acknowledging good points, good criticism, like really accept a good point or critique, be grateful for it because you'll learn from it and you won't make the next, uh, the same mistake twice. So in a nutshell, if the audience would remember only one thing, which might actually be realistic, what should that be? So really center it, uh, your talk around this, make sure they remember and have a chance to really remember that take home message. This is also what you might want to put on your final slides or the kind of things to reiterate. So what is your message? How can you get it across? Thinking in these terms can really help you to plan kind of top down prioritizing and really planning your whole talk around this. If you want to know more, there's lots of beautiful advice from the TED community because they typically have this one core idea that you want to communicate. Also, keep in mind, if you're interested and enthusiastic, enthusiastic about the topic, so will be the audience. And the reverse is also true. If you're not excited about it, the audience definitely won't be. Key thing is really be yourself, be authentic, be okay with your way of speaking with your pacing and so on because it's really hard to change that i mean you can try a little bit maybe slowing down but that often makes you less authentic and less excited and i mean there's all these advice including in this talk on what you could and should do but for example from the many ted talks i watched some of the ones that i really appreciate the most violet pretty much every single one of these typical ted rules of what what you should or should not do on stage and finally you can ask yourself would your talk actually convince yourself if the topic was new to you so really give a talk you would like to listen to treat the audience in a way that you would want to be treated care about the audience i mean actually care about the audience and then a lot of things will come by itself all right thanks for listening hope this was useful